<clears throat> okay, so um, we'll go through this presentation quickly. So razor size immunization can be quite a technical topics, but we'll try and go through it uh, quickly. So this is just basic that we are dealing with. Uh, maybe we can talk about technical aspects um, at another time. Okay, so red blood cells look very, very innocent um, when you look at them. Uh, they look quite sexy actually, but um, they are not as innocent as they look. They have all these antigens on their surface. These antigens, uh, if you take them in another person's blood, cause a lot of reactions, even possibly death. So all these antigens are on the red blood cell surface. So when you look at them like that, um, they look so nice on a microscope, but they have a lot of antigens on their surface. So the blood grouping that we normally do is really oversimplified. So when somebody says you have blood group A, they're just talking about the A antigen. Um, but what about the B antigen? What about the other ones? And so on. So your blood group is very unique. It's, um, it's a product of all these antigens. It's like kind of like a fingerprint. It's not as simple as we normally do. Like, oh no, your blood group O, oh no, your blood group um, B. And so your blood group is the same as mine. Your blood is really like a fingerprint. There's no blood that is exactly the same like another blood. So what do we mean when we say your blood group whatever. So we say your blood group A, when you have A antigen on your red blood cells. We say your blood group B, when you have B antigen on your red blood cells. We say your blood group AB, when you have both A and B on your, on your red cell antigens. So apart from having the antigens, you also have antibodies in your serum. So if your blood group A, you have antibody B in your serum circulating. If you have blood group B, you have antibodies against A circulating in your serum. That's why B cannot get A blood. If you have, if you are called blood group AB, it means you have both antigen A and antigen B on your red blood cells. And you have no antibodies against A or antibodies against B in your, in your serum or in your plasma. So that is how we say so. Then when we say you are razors positive, what do we mean? What we mean, um, what we mean is that you have the antigen D. Apart from you being A, you have antigen D on your red blood cells. So if you have B, like that blood on top there, if you have B and D, then it means you are B positive. If you have um, A and D, it means you are A positive. The other red blood cell there that has nothing, we'll call it blood group O, O negative, because it doesn't have antigen D and it doesn't have antigen A. So this last one with nothing, this red blood cell with nothing is O negative because it doesn't have antigen D and it doesn't have antigen A. Then there's this other one which just has D. It means this person is O, positive because they don't have A antigen, they don't have B antigen, but they just have D antigen. So this person is O positive. So that's how blood groups are done. So what's special about the rhesus antigen is that it develops very quickly actually. By the time you are 38 days after fertilization, the antigen is already there. And in the serum, there are no antibodies against anti-D from birth. So that's something that is special as opposed to the ABO. When you are born, you already have the B antibodies in your serum. You already have B antigens on your blood surface. So a baby with blood group B cannot receive blood group A because it will react because it already has antibodies in the serum. So when an antigen comes in the circulation, usually antigen presenting cells process that antigen and that information goes to the B cells, the B cells produce antibodies. Then antibodies will attack whatever antigen is in circulation. So we have different kinds of antibodies, as you can see. We have antibodies against M, uh, we have antibody M, we have antibody A, 
we have antibody G and so on. All I need you to say to see on the left slide is that um, IgM is the biggest kind of antibody and IgG is small. That's really what we need to remember here. So what happens then? So what happens is that you have a, a mother who's rhesus negative and you have a partner who's rhesus positive. So this partner impregnates this rhesus negative uh, lady and they have a rhesus positive baby. So these red blood cells somehow seep through the maternal circulation. When these red blood cells go in the maternal circulation, they cause production of antibodies like we described in the previous slides. So these antibodies that are produced are IgM at the beginning. So by the time IgG gets to be produced, that can last up to two to six months. That, that baby, this first baby here has already been born. So it has gone scot-free because IgM is a big molecule, it's a big antibody, does not cross the placenta. So what happens is that this first pregnancy for this woman usually goes without any problems because by the time IgG is being produced, it's six months later. And usually this sipping of blood usually happens in the second trimester, mm -hmm. in, the third, in the third trimester. So it means that by the time by the time this IgG, which can cross the placenta, is being produced, then the baby has already been born. That is why the first baby always goes with no, no problems. So then this is what I've been trying to describe. When a second baby comes up, the second baby is also raised as positive. Now the immune system already knows about this antigen. So it produces this um, amnestic response. It already remembers this antigen. So it produces a lot of antibodies from the beginning. A lot of IgG is produced because this is the second exposure. The kind of antibodies being produced are produced in a faster rate than in the first instance where we needed antigen presenting cells that present uh, the antigen to these B cells in these lymph nodes. And so on, that process is not there on second exposure. So it's short and antibodies quickly uh, go into the baby's circulation. And these antibodies will attach to the baby's red blood cells. Then the baby's red blood cells, since the antibodies on the red is baby's red blood cells, they'll be recognized as foreign. And then these um, red blood cells will be destroyed by the baby's reticular endothelial system. So the liver, the spleen will start destroying the baby's red blood cells because these red blood cells have been, have antibodies attached to them. Anything with antibody attached to it is foreign and the immune system destroys it. So that is what happens. This is what this slide is, is showing that on the second pregnancy, these antibodies are produced at a fast rate. They go into to the fetus because the IgG that is produced is a small molecule. So it goes through and ends up attaching to the fetal red blood cells and the, fetal, the fetus itself destroys its own red blood cell. So it's en it ends up with anemia. It ends up with uh, heart disease. Uh, it ends up with um, jaundice because um, the red blood cells are being destroyed. So that is what happens with um, rhesus isoimmunization. And there are other incidents where this, these red blood cells from the baby can seep into the maternal circulation and cause this uh, isoimmunization that we've just described. So when a woman has trauma, when she has antipartum hemorrhage, when she has wrong blood transfused, during delivery, some blood might mix, during an abortion, during an ectopic pregnancy, during a molar pregnancy, and during some procedures like chorionic villa sampling, amniocentesis, and um, external cephalic vision. All these things are times when fetal blood can seep into the maternal circulation and cause antibodies to be produced in the mother. And later, these antibodies will come in the fetus and cause these problems that we've described. So not every woman who, who gets this fetal maternal hemorrhage gets sensitized because it depends on the woman's immunity. It depends on the immunogenicity of the mother. And it depends on whether the blood group of the baby 
in terms of A, B, O is compatible. So for instance, if the mother is O, it means she has antibodies against A and B in her circulation. And if the fetus is A, it means it has antigens, A antigen on the red blood cell. So if, if fetal maternal hemorrhage happens, then um, what will happen is that because the ABO system is very immunogenic, these red blood cells will be cleared from the circulation even before the mother gets sensitized. So that's what that slide means. And then the volume of blood also determines um, if a mother gets sensitized or not. So how do we prevent uh, this condition? Of course, we need to know our blood groups. We need to have anti-D available. And this anti-D should be given to mothers every time there's a sensitizing event like we described in the previous slides and also routinely at 28 weeks at 34 weeks and after delivery within 72 hours of delivery the mother should get anti-d if the mother doesn't get anti-d within 72 hours of delivery then she should get it at least within 10 days so that is the the recommendation and then the dose that you give is um, depends on the gestation age. In the first trimester, usually it's like 100, uh, 50 to 100 micrograms. In the second trimester, it's around 100 to 150 micrograms. And in the third trimester, usually we give 300 micrograms. The dose for anti-D is 30 micrograms for every meal of blood that finds itself in the mother's circulation. So, that is the correct way to, to put um, the dosing for, for anti-D. So we only have one minute left, unfortunately. So I don't know if, um, can we manage to log in the last time when it goes off? Yes, we can. Yeah, so there's just like, yeah, five minutes or so, or 10 minutes left, then we will have enough, um, enough time for, for some questions because this, this topic can be a bit technical. So we have these uh, last few minutes to, uh, to see and continue. So that's how we dose anti-D. Of course, we need to know, find out if a woman is sensitized. 